Evening, everyone, and welcome to The Next Revolution. I'm Steve Hilton, and this is the home of positive populism, pro-worker, pro-family, pro-community, and especially pro-America. A huge win for Bernie Sanders in the Nevada caucuses last night. Even President Trump tweeted this. Congratulations, Bernie, and don't let them take it away from you. I think he's enjoying this. All right, we'll get into all that in a moment, along with Mike Bloomberg's humiliation in the debate last week. We've got a frightening preview of the loony left California policies that may be coming to you, and a more positive preview of President Trump's trip to India, where he arrives in the next few hours. Live with me in Los Angeles tonight, Kaylee McEnany, Kira Davis, Sarah Carter, and Henry Olson. Well, it was a blowout for Bernie in the Nevada caucuses, and he is now the Democrats' clear frontrunner. So, it's time for a closer look at Bernie, and in particular, the superficial cliché trotted out by nearly every pundit that Bernie is a populist, the Democrats' version of Donald Trump. That is completely wrong, and tonight I'm going to show you why. But first, I want to say this about Bernie. I do admire the way he's pushed himself to the position he's in today through sheer force of character and ideas. I agree with many of the things he says are wrong with the country, the corruption of the establishment, the way working people lost power. I used to agree with him on immigration until he totally changed his position. More on that in a moment. And on a personal note, I've got a lot of time for his campaign co-chair, Nina Turner. She's a huge talent with a big future. But here comes the but. No one should buy the pundit's lazy consensus that Bernie is a populist like Trump. He's not. And here are the four reasons why. First, Trump was an outsider. Bernie is actually an insider. Before entering the presidential race, Donald Trump never ran for anything. He was never in politics before and approached it like a problem-solving businessman. He combined traditional conservative ideas with new, more populist ones. Pro-business on tax and regulation, but pro-worker on trade and immigration. Pro-America on defense, pro-family on paid leave and child tax credits conservative judges and criminal justice reform. And perhaps in the long term, his most significant policy shift of all, upending the establishment consensus on China. Trump's original, innovative policy mix is something only an outsider could have put together. By contrast, Bernie has been a political insider all his life. For almost four decades, he's collected taxpayer-funded paychecks as a mayor, a congressman and now senator. But he's not even an effective insider. He's introduced 239 bills while in the Senate. Guess how many became law? Two. Maybe for once Hillary got it right when she said nobody likes him, nobody wants to work with him, he got nothing done. Here's the second reason it's wrong to see Bernie as just the Trump of the left. Donald Trump's policies are mainstream. Bernie's are extreme. The policy agenda President Trump ran on in 2016 and has been implementing since is based on mainstream positions with majority support, whether that's strong borders, renegotiating trade deals, cutting taxes, or school choice. But Bernie's positions, they are wildly out of the mainstream. They are extreme and have only minority support. Open borders, rejected by over 75% of Americans. Abolishing ICE, rejected by over 50%. Prisoners voting, rejected by nearly 70%. Abolishing private health insurance, rejected by a majority. And, of course, the multi-trillion dollar Green New Deal, actually the centerpiece of Bernie's plan for the economy, rejected by a massive 67%. You're not a populist if your policies aren't popular. Here's the third big difference between Bernie and Trump. The president stands up to the establishment. In the early days, Trump had establishment people all around him trying to block him on everything. Trade, China, the war, endless wars, immigration, you name it. But the president stuck to his populist instincts and now we're seeing the results. That is a huge contrast with Bernie. In his last presidential campaign, he was firmly against open borders. Should we have a completely open border so that anybody can come into the United States of America? If that were to happen, which I strongly disagree with, there is no question in my mind that that would substantially lower wages in this country. But he realized he couldn't get anywhere with that position in the new woke democratic establishment. So now he's completely caved. He's for decriminalizing border crossings, breaking up ICE, the whole crazy package. But here's the fourth 
a most important difference between Trump and Bernie, and the thing that the pundits most infuriatingly get wrong. They call them both populist. Bernie, a populist of the left, Trump on the right. No! Populism means taking power out of the hands of the elite and the establishment and putting it in the hands of the people. That's what Trump is doing. Deregulation takes power from government bureaucrats and puts it in the hands of employers and business owners, especially small businesses, who are hurt most by overregulation. Tax cuts put more financial power in the hands of working people. Judges like Gorsuch and Kavanaugh and hundreds of others appointed by Trump are upholding people's rights in the Constitution and curbing the power of the administrative state. School choice gives power to parents. Parental leave gives power to families. In so many areas, Trump is truly delivering the populist promise of power to the people. Bernie wants to redistribute power, all right, but he wants to take power from the private sector elite and give it to a new public sector elite, a new army of bureaucrats and busybodies running around telling you what to do once Bernie's told them what to do. Nationalized health care, nationalized rent control, nationalized energy. Wherever you look, Bernie wants to nationalize power. Populism is all about decentralizing power. Bernie is the direct opposite. He is for centralizing power. He is not a populist. He is a socialist. And by the way, don't believe the spin that socialism is nothing unusual. It's normal in places like the UK or Sweden or Denmark. That is rubbish. I know those countries. What they have is not Bernie's democratic socialism. It is social democracy, and it is totally different. Nowhere in Europe is as extreme as Bernie's plan for America. Even the UK, with the National Health Service, doesn't ban private insurance. Sweden has massive school choice and vouchers. Denmark has one of the lowest levels of government regulation in the world. Bernie is a Washington insider with extreme socialist positions who panders to the establishment when it suits his own political purposes. I'll give the last word to a well-known Democrat who doesn't think that the Democrats in the end will buy what Bernie is selling. They're not interested in socialism and the revolution and all that foolishness you hear. And in another interview, he went a little further than foolishness. Most of the people aren't into all this distracting bleep about open borders and letting prisoners vote. Democrats talking about free college tuition or debt forgiveness. People all over this country worked their way through school, sent their kids to school, paid off student loans. They don't want to hear this bleep. You're so right, James Carville. People don't want that bleep. They don't want socialism. They want populism, positive populism. And from President Trump, that is exactly what they're getting. All right, let the pundits know what you think of what they're saying about Bernie. Please send this around. Stop them getting it wrong. Follow us at Steve Hill to Next and at Next Rev FNC. We will post this and we'd love you to share it.